This is me in a fabric. Hello, today I'm going to at least get some of the planning parts started for my next t-shirt quilt. I am planning on using t-shirts from high school, so I pulled all the shirts out from the bin. I have the colors I would need to make this sort of like a rainbow. And then the plan with this quilt is to quilt 2009 on it like I did 2013 on my college quilt. And something I'm really excited about is we have some family friends who have a quilting machine. So I think it's just gonna be so much fun and I'm already just really excited to get to learn how to use that. So my idea is, my idea is to cut my interfacing squares out as big as possible. Get those ironed onto my t-shirts right after I separate the front and the back. That way the t-shirt doesn't really have a chance to stretch. And then hopefully I'll cut out some really neat squares out of the t-shirts and the interfacing already ironed together. So that is my plan. And you see here I have my new sewing machine. It is the Singer Quantum Stylus Touch. And I'm really excited to use this for this project. final t-shirt square and I have to say at least from what I can tell so far putting the interfacing on first before cutting out the t-shirts has made all the squares look so much better. The interfacing was cut a little bit bigger it's caught all the sides and also I'm really pleased with how that turned out so once I cut out this final square I'll just make sure that my pattern is laid out right with all the different colors and then I'll start sewing these squares together. seams down now that I have my pairs of squares all sewn together. I'm excited. I'm going to do the technique of nesting the seams. With my first t-shirt quilt, I like read an article about nesting seams. Did not make any sense to me, so I didn't do that. And this time around, I watched a video about how to do it and it makes so much sense. So I'm excited because I think it will help all my seams match up perfectly. And so with nesting the seams, I'm going to iron one row of the squares in one direction instead of ironing the seam flat. And then the next row, I'm going to iron them in the opposite direction. And when you match them up, the seam to sort of lock together. So I just got into my car after the quilt and craft fair here in Oklahoma City and I found some really fun fabric for the back of this quilt. There are a bunch of like different animals and they have like silly quotes on them so I definitely know I don't want to use all of these. I just want to use some of them. Definitely the unicorn and the cat. I think I'm going to cut them out, piece them together. I might be making this more complicated than it needs to be. And there were two complementary fabrics. This one has a lot of the animals that are on there in that watercolor pattern. And then this was just, this is me in a fabric. It's the kittens. And obviously the front's like really special because you know, they're all my high school t-shirts, but I am just so excited for the back of this quilt. I just stopped by the craft store to get some more backing fabric because I did not buy enough. So what is a sewing project without me not doing the math correctly at all? Just a reminder, this is the awesome fabric and I just want to hold this one up. This is the fabric that I found. It has like those speckles. Now that I have it in my hands, I just love it even more. I think.
have my 2009 pulled up on my computer. It's casting to my projector. The projection isn't the size of the quilt. It's a little bit smaller. So I'll start at the top and then scooch it a little bit and then I'm trace the bottom and I have my white marking pen for the dark squares and then just my regular fabric marker with blue ink for the lighter color squares. our friend's house and got my quilt quilted on the long arm. It was a super fun and interesting process. I really enjoyed my time there. No, no, please don't do that. But in it, this is entirely my fault. I didn't double check. I had my little guy with me, so I was sort of distracted with him while the quilting part was getting set up. But the backing was put on at a 90 degree turn. I think what I've decided is I will take it apart and try to do the quilting part at home. I know that if I took it apart and took it back, they would definitely help me do it again. And we'll just move on from there. <laughs> I am so glad my friend suggested using the walking foot because that looks so much better than all of my other attempts using the darning foot. I wish I had started off using the walking foot. I don't know if I will take out the stuff that I did with the darning foot. You can see it just turned out really jagged every time I started and stopped because the darning foot just sort of hovers over the fabric. The big issue, the reason why I moved over to the walking foot is just because the bobbin thread was getting all bunched up and I was messing with the tension and that wasn't fixing it. The walking foot is definitely the way to go for this project. So. The quilting on the quilt and I have trimmed it all up on all the sides. I realize now that I didn't really quite center the backing right and I didn't you know trim it super perfectly because the border on the top's a little bit wonky but all in all I'm very happy with how it is looking and so the final step will be to add the binding. My OSU t-shirt quilt, I had some gold edge binding. So for a high school t-shirt quilt, I'm gonna do some silver edge binding. I think that will look really good with the colors. edge binding on. I'm not super happy with how it turned out. Most of the corners turned out horribly. I sewed the binding on completely wrong for my 
first OSU teacher quilt. I sewed the binding on the correct way this time. I just wanted to explain really quickly how I had sewn it on because I didn't film it very well. If this blue fabric is the front of my quilt and the batting represents the back, I opened up my double fold edge binding. I lined the edge of the binding up with the edge of my quilt and just sewed down that line on the front. And I wish I had actually done it on the back instead because the front of my quilt is a lot stiffer with the interfacing. The back was just not as stiff because it was just, you know, quilting cotton. And so whenever I sewed it on along the front, the back of it got bunched up in just a few places. So I feel like if I had sewn the edge binding opened up on the back, the front would, wouldn't have gotten bunched up. I sewed the edge binding on one side, then I folded it over. And so it encapsulated the quilt. And then on the back side, I just sort of sewed as close as I could to the edge all along the back. It was sort of hard to do a good job and the stitch line on the front didn't always end up on the edge binding. I think if I were to do it again on the front, I would sew it by hand. Oh. 